Two years ago, Russia began the invasion of Ukraine, thereby triggering the most widely known military conflict in Europe, which is still ongoing to this day. The war in Ukraine, started by the Russians, turned the attention of the world in the blink of an eye, created countless unaccepted events, new topics were created, and countless different temporary and permanent conditions were formed in different places of the world. Each person experiences the armed conflict between Ukraine and Russia differently, depending on which part of the world they live in. Each person thinks differently about the conflict, about the events that take place in the war and its background, and about the decisions which are made by the leaders of the countries or organizations of the world in relation to the conflict that might also determine their own lives. Sometimes we ask questions about the conflict, how the front is, what events are happening, who accuses one side of committing a war crime, and in more extreme cases we may develop fear and anxiety, for example because the war might affect us in the near future. It is certain, however, that perhaps the most well-known and most complicated war of the 21st century, which is still ongoing, is difficult to summarize, no matter from which angle we look at the conflict. Welcome everyone, I'm Alfred Mapping, and in this video I will present a summary of the current war between Ukraine and Russia, focusing on the events of the fighting as well as the formation of public opinion, geopolitical consequences, humanitarian and economical issues, among with many other things. Although the current conflict between Russia and Ukraine began already in 2014, when the Russians annexed the Crimean Peninsula and started the war in eastern Ukraine in the Donbass area, the current active armed conflict began two years ago. The undescendants took place at the turn of 2021 and 2022, when Russia ordered a huge army mobilization and military exercises along the Russian-Ukrainian and Belarusian-Ukrainian borders, attracting the attention of the world. Even then, the press raised the concern that Russia was preparing to attack Ukraine. The decisive point occurred on February 21, 2022. At that time, Russia announced that it would recognize the two pro-Russian separatist states on the territory of Ukraine, the People's Republic of Donetsk and the People's Republic of Luhansk as independent countries, which had already succeeded from Ukraine in 2014 and had controlled a significant part of the Donetsk and Luhansk districts, together with their capitals, for eight years. Right after that, Russia announced that it would send Russian peacekeeping troops to the region in order to stabilize the situation, and in the following days the Russian army entered the separatist-controlled areas of Ukraine. After that, the Russian state parliament authorized the Russian president Vladimir Putin to be able to deploy the Russian army abroad. After that, on February 24, 2022, an armed conflict broke out again in Europe, 77 years after the Second World War. On this day, the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, announced that he would order a special military operation in Ukraine. In the video message, Putin stated that he was doing this in order to ensure the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. He stated that Ukraine was run by a Western-directed neo-Nazi government and made false claims that the current Ukrainian leadership is making a genocide against Russian minorities and producing nuclear weapons. A few minutes after Putin's announcement, the Russian army began the invasion of Ukraine. The country was attacked from several sides, not just from Russia, but also began to attack the country from Belarus and the Black Sea. In a short time, a certain part of the country came under Russian control, and then the Russian army began to besiege the country's capital, Kyiv. Initially, it seemed that Ukraine would not be able to stop the Russian advance and would soon lose. However, the Ukrainian army began to massively defend the country against the Russian attack, which resulted in the withdrawal of the Russian army from the northern and northeastern parts of Ukraine in early April. 
Since then, the war has been taking place in the southeastern part of Ukraine, in the districts of Kherson and Zaporizhia, as well as in the territory of the Donbass. Perhaps the longest and most destructive siege of the war took place in the Donetsk region. The Russian army surrounded the Ukrainian port city of Mariupol in the first days of the war, after which the siege of the city, which lasted for nearly three months, began. During the siege, the Russian army massively bombed the port city, destroying residential buildings and shelters without regard for the civilian population. The Russian army also bombed the church, where children and the elderly were guarded, and the Ukrainian army tried to draw the Russian army's attention to this with a sign in Russian, to no avail. Mariupol has been under Russian occupation since May 16, 2022. 80 to 90 percent of the city's buildings have been partially or completely destroyed, and at least 20,000 civilians have died during the siege. Following the atrocities committed by Russian troops in Mariupol, Western and Ukrainian media often compare the siege of Mariupol to the World War II siege of Leningrad. In the southern part of the country, not far from the Crimean Peninsula, is the city of Kherson, where almost 300,000 people live. The city fell into Russian hands on March 2, 2022. The Russian troops were received negatively by the population of the city. Already in the first days of the occupation, several thousand protested against the presence of the Russian army. During the demonstrations, the Russian army fired live ammunition into the protesting crowd several times. Kherson was under Russian occupation for eight months. Residents of the city repeatedly reported that the Russian army kept the population under fear, torture and terror were present in the city. And many Ukrainian inscriptions and national symbols were removed from the buildings of public institutions, which were replaced with Russian national symbols. In September 2022, the Ukrainian army launched a counteroffensive in the Kherson district, as a result of which the Russian army retreated to the other side of the Dnieper River. The city was liberated by the Ukrainian army on November 11, 2022. In the following months, the Ukrainian army attempted several counterattacks against the invading Russian army. The most successful of the numerous counterattack attempts was carried out in September 2022. In the Kharkiv district, the Ukrainian army liberated more than 500 settlements from Russian occupation in an area of roughly 12,000 square kilometers. The latest turning point occurred on August 6, 2024, when the Ukrainian army unacceptably attacked the Kursk Oblast inside Russia, making the first time during the war that the Ukrainian army entered the territory of Russia. The war between Ukraine and Russia has practically become a standing war. The front lines are frozen and the soldiers of both sides cannot gain an advantage over the other side except for minor advances. The fighting has been going on in the areas of southeastern Ukraine for two years now and the future of the ongoing conflict remains unknown. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, many decisive changes have occurred not only in the two countries involved, but in the entire world, both politically and economically. In the very first days, most countries of the world condemned the Russian aggression one day after the start of the attack on February 25, 2022, the United Nations condemned Russia's aggression against Ukraine in a unified statement and called on Russia to withdraw its troops from Ukraine immediately. The European Union also condemned Russia for its aggression against Ukraine. On February 25, 2022, Russia's membership was suspended from the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, and on March 16, 2022, the Committee of Ministers expelled Russia from the Council of Europe. In addition to these, the European Union has imposed numerous sanctions on Russia. So far, more than a dozen sanction packages have been adopted uniformly by all EU member states, the aim of which is to completely isolate Russia, both politically and economically. 
In the days and weeks following the start of the war, several large Western companies also left the Russian market and their places were soon taken over by local Russian companies. In response to the sanctions, Russia also took retaliatory measures against the EU and other countries. The list of countries unfriendly to Russia was created in 2021, which lists countries that, according to the Russian government, are hostile to Russia. Initially, only two countries, the USA and the Czech Republic, were on it, but after the outbreak of the war, many countries included on this list, including all EU member states, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. Since the war, the European Union has imposed a number of sanctions against Russia. Russian airplanes were banned from EU airspace, and at least one Russian diplomat was expelled from every European Union member state. On March 1, 2022, Russian banks were excluded from the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, and on March 20, 2023, Russia banned the use of the SWIFT system on its territory. In addition to sanctioning Russia, the European Union and many countries around the world provide significant humanitarian aid to Ukraine and to the Ukrainian people. Since the war, the member states of the European Union have significantly supported the Ukrainian army in the fight against the Russians. Many countries, such as Poland or the Baltic states, sent significant shipments of weapons to Ukraine. Other EU countries, such as Sweden, provide Ukraine with aerial weapons and aircraft. There are some EU member states that do not send weapons and live ammunition to Ukraine, but support the Ukrainian army in other ways all the same. For example, Austria supports the Ukrainian army with many military equipment, such as helmets and vests, and Hungary supports the combat medics in the Ukrainian army with medical equipment and provides training for Ukrainian combat medics within its territory. Since the outbreak of the war in 2022, both the Ukrainian and Russian sides have suffered heavy losses, both military and civilian casualties. In addition, many Ukrainian cities suffered heavy damage and destruction from Russian military and missile attacks, including in southeastern Ukraine, and major Ukrainian cities such as Kyiv, Kharkiv, Dnipro, Donetsk and Odessa also suffered heavy damage. According to estimates, more than 800,000 Ukrainian soldiers and civilians have lost their lives due to the war in the last two years, while the Russian army is said to have lost around 700,000 soldiers during the war, but due to the secrecy of the Russian side, it is simply impossible to determine the exact Russian losses. After the outbreak of the war, a huge emigration from the territory of Ukraine began, Millions of Ukrainian civilians fled from Ukraine to the west, including to the western half of Europe and central eastern Europe. The refugee flow has also created a humanitarian crisis in Ukraine and the surrounding regions. There are no exact data on how many people have left Ukraine so far, but according to broad estimates, 5 to 10 million Ukrainian civilians have left the country so far, that is, up to 20% of the population of Ukraine may have fled the country. On September 21st, 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered a partial mobilization aimed at conscripting hundreds of thousands of Russians into the Russian army to make up for the losses they suffered in the war in Ukraine. After the announcement, at least three refugee flows also started from Russia. So far, Hundreds of thousands of Russian civilians have left Russia, fleeing to neighboring countries such as Finland, Georgia, Kazakhstan and Mongolia. During the war, Russia and the Russian military committed countless war crimes in Ukraine since 2022. Among the most common Russian war crimes are the Russian missile attacks, with which civilian buildings, hospitals, medical facilities, cultural sites and public institutions are bombed innumerably, thus taking the lives of tens of thousands of Ukrainian people. 
The international community has also accused Russia of using banned chemical weapons in Ukraine during the fighting, in most cases tear gas. In April 2024, according to the Daily Telegraph, the Russian military is conducting systematic attacks with illegal chemical weapons against the Ukrainian military. Since the beginning of the war, the Russian army has committed genocide against the Ukrainian civilian population in some cases, including in the Ukrainian territories occupied by the Russians and in the northern parts of Ukraine. One of the most serious cases took place in Bucha, a settlement west of Kyiv. On April 1, 2022, after the Russian army withdrew from the settlement, the Ukrainian army found dead bodies of civilians on the side of the streets, as well as signs that many civilians have been tortured and raped by Russian army soldiers. According to the UN, in March 2022, the Russian army massacred 73 to 178 civilians while the Ukrainian government said the Russians massacred 458 civilians. The Russian government denies that they committed the massacre and accused Ukraine of a false flag operation. The fights between the two sides do not spare the apartment buildings either. The UN condemned both Russia and Ukraine for the fact that the Russian and Ukrainian armies fought against each other on several occasions using residential buildings and houses for defensive purposes, thus tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians were injured or lost their lives. The destruction and horrors of the war affect the whole of Ukraine and the children living there are not exempt from it either. Perhaps the most serious war crime committed by the Russian regime during the war was presented by a study conducted by researchers at Yale University in Connecticut, USA. It turned out that during the war, the Russian regime, led by Vladimir Putin, systematically abducted many Ukrainian children from orphanages or took them away from their parents from the Ukrainian territories occupied by the Russians. The exact number of the abducted Ukrainian children is not known. According to the Ukrainian authorities, at least 20,000 children were abducted by the Russians from the territory of Ukraine, but the real number of the abducted Ukrainian children could be as high as 700,000. The Russian government commits countless violations of the law with the abducted Ukrainian children. Some of the Ukrainian children are sent to Russian re-education camps within the occupied territories or within Russia, where they have to spend their daily lives in fear and oppression. Physical abuse and fear-mongering are common elements in these camps, the food supply is of poor quality, and many children suffer from various diseases. Meanwhile, ideological re-education is also taking place in the camp, the singing of the Russian national anthem is mandatory every morning, and the Russian educators manipulate the Ukrainian children there with many lies, according to experts. The purpose of this is to use the Ukrainian children as tools for Russian propaganda, to delete the Ukrainian national identity from the Ukrainian children, and to make them to be loyal Russians with full of Russian national sentiments. The Russian government is also trying to forcibly adopt Ukrainian children, that is, to give them to Russian families within the territory of Russia. According to estimates, thousands of Ukrainian children have been brought from the occupied territories to Russia, who were then given to Russian families or are still on the waiting list on Russian adoption sites these days. Ukrainian children who have been captured by Russia are in a very difficult situation. They rarely or not at all can keep in touch with their families, so their rescue and release is becoming more and more difficult. Although some NGOs have tried to act, so far only a few hundred Ukrainian children have been lucky enough to be freed from Russian camps and captivity. The International Criminal Court made its decision soon after the research conducted by the aforementioned Yale University and after the reports of the victims. Since the kidnapping, detention and forced adoption of Ukrainian children is considered genocide according to the United Nations, the ICC has issued an international arrest warrant against Russian President Vladimir Putin and Russian Children's Rights Commissioner Maria Lvova-Belova 
who is said to be a main perpetrator of the mass abduction of Ukrainian children from Ukraine. The International Criminal Court currently has 124 member countries. According to the International Arrest Warrant, if Vladimir Putin enters the territory of a country that is a member of the International Criminal Court, such as Brazil, France or perhaps Cambodia, then the authorities of that country must arrest Putin and hand him over to the ICC in The Hague. Life in the Ukrainian territories occupied by the Russian army has become increasingly difficult and risky for civilians. The Russian military frequently uses abductions, torture and other illegal means against the Ukrainian civilian population living in the occupied territories, while the influence of Russian propaganda in these regions continue to grow. In some occupied cities, such as Mariupol in the picture, the Russian government makes investments in which it builds new residential buildings and public institutions for the residents, and with this, Russia wants to show the world that the Russians care about the people living there and that their lives go on. However, this is a lie. Most of the new buildings are either fake or can only be used by members of the Russian army. These buildings were built by Russia only to show a false image to the outside world of its non-existent goodwill. In September 2022, the Russian government held a referendum in the occupied Ukrainian territories to allow the people living in the occupied territories to decide whether the region should join Russia. During the referendums, in which there were no legal democratic election rules and in all likelihood the population was threatened, 85-99% to of the residents of the four Ukrainian regions occupied by the Russians decided, based on the results, that they wanted to join Russia, and then in the following days the four provinces were annexed by Russia. This sham referendum was condemned by the international community, and to date no country except North Korea has recognized Russia's annexation of the occupied territories of the four Ukrainian regions. In addition to the Russian war crimes committed against the Ukrainian population, the Russian army also caused a lot of natural damage in Ukraine, and to this day, construction has not started in many places, which significantly tests the everyday life of the Ukrainian population, even when it comes to procuring their most basic needs. Since the outbreak of the war, not only on the battlefield, but also in the digital world, an active war has been going on in the acquisition of information. One of the most effective tools in this case is manipulation. There are many news stories appearing on the internet and social media that provide information about distorted news and try to give a false image to the reader. In Russia, since the outbreak of the war, the influence of propaganda has become much stronger in everyday life. Russian propaganda mainly expresses the glory and heroism of the Russian nation, builds a cult of personality around Russian President Vladimir Putin and glorifies Soviet history. At the same time, it attacks the countries considered enemies by the Russian government with false accusations as well as falsely describes certain nations or even denies their existence, such as in connection with the Ukrainian nation. Since there is a long tradition of spreading propaganda in Russia, and especially in the Russian countryside, and the people living there often do not even notice that they are being deceived, it is estimated that 70-80% to 80 of the Russian population believes this propaganda and supports Putin as well as the actions of the Russian government, while they do not receive adequate information about the reality at all. Since the beginning of the war, there were several times of trying to organize various peace conferences about a possible peace or even just an armistice, but these negotiations have had no results other than various declarations. Moreover, diplomatic relations between the Russian and Ukrainian sides have been completely broken since the outbreak of the war and according to the Russian government, negotiations became impossible after the Ukrainian invasion of the Kursk Oblast. In addition, neither side will settle for a truce, neither country is willing to give up any territory. Ukraine has repeatedly stated that the fight will continue 
until all of Ukraine is recaptured from Russia, while Vladimir Putin is adamant that they will not stop until all of Ukraine is captured by them. The four regions partially occupied by Russia account for only 15% of Ukraine's territory. Since the war, Western public opinion has strongly condemned Russia and in the first days of the war, and on several occasions in the following two years, demonstrations or solidarity actions in support of Ukraine were held in many European cities. Since the war, European society has actually become unified in the European Union and other European countries, it has become important to stand up for democracy, freedom, justice and European unity. However, the situation among Russian society has deteriorated a lot and the general atmosphere has also changed in a negative sense. To this day, 70-80% to of the Russian society supports the Russian government and its actions against humanity in Ukraine, and they see Ukrainians and Western countries as enemies and think of various false stereotypes about them. Russian nationalism and chauvinism have always been strongly present in the majority of Russian society, the reasons for which can mainly be traced back to decades of Soviet socialist propaganda, and these propaganda tools are adopted by the current Russian media. As a result of this and other factors, such as post-Soviet nostalgia, a significant part of Russian society feels that they are a superior nation and they judge other nations based on what information Russian state propaganda conveys to people. The outbreak of war resulted in a complete rupture in Europe, both in terms of economy and politics. Russia and its most important European ally, Belarus, have been completely isolated in Europe since the war began, and the newly developed situation brought about a complete change in public life throughout Europe. Significant changes also followed in global politics. Experts and analysts, as well as many people, believe that after the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, the Second Cold War has begun around the world, which, like the Cold War of the 20th century, has two sides. The Western bloc includes, among others, the United States and the member states of the European Union, as well as countries that represent democratic values. This bloc aims to guarantee democracy, human rights, peace, development and equality throughout the world. They typically support democratic and free countries. In contrast, the Eastern Bloc typically consists of countries with dictatorships, low living standards and no respect for human rights. The two largest representatives of this bloc are Russia and China. According to them, their goal is to defend peace and their sovereignty against the American and Western influence they mentioned, but in reality, their goal is to make their country into world powers and expand their influence worldwide, even at the cost of violence. They typically support authoritarian and totalitarian regimes on many continents around the world. The beginning of the Second Cold War undoubtedly changed the world as we know it and brought many new changes and difficulties for people, regardless of whether they live in the Western or Eastern Bloc or in a neutral country, and this period will certainly last for a long time, even for decades in the world, which significantly changes the image of the world we have thought about so far. The current active events of the war between Ukraine and Russia have been taking place in Ukraine for two years now, and this period has brought significant changes throughout the world. Unfortunately, Ukraine has gone through or is currently going through a lot of destruction, devastation and terrible events committed by the Russian army, it is difficult to follow the current course of the war, almost at any moment an event can happen that can bring a turn and the future of the conflict is simply unpredictable. However, if we take into account that the fronts have barely moved in the last two years and that neither the Ukrainian nor the Russian side is willing to negotiate or find a diplomatic solution, it is unfortunately very likely that this conflict could last for many years, the negative effects of the war will affect the current generation for a lifetime 
and this will be transferred to the following generations as well, the future consequences of which literally cannot be foreseen. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, click the like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on the channel's latest content. If you have any thoughts or maybe personal experiences about the war in Ukraine or its consequences around the world, feel free to write your opinion in the comment section below. Goodbye and see you in the next video.